everyone you might have seen my previous video if you haven't then I recommend you do because I um, picked the color palette that I will be using today in the um, painting and that will explain to you why I chose the colors uh, and how to mix them to get to the right tone the majority of the botanical paintings that I do when I want to do something quite quick um, I always start with drawing it out with my um, platinum carbon ink fountain pen which you love which you know by now that I absolutely love so this flower is called camelosium or wax flower I suppose it's probably easier to pronounce so I'm going to rotate it around and see what works better I like this um, this side here because the flowers almost look more at me then you can figure out whether you want to paint them looking uh, straight onto them from an angle from the side whichever way i think i'm going to paint mine like so but for you because of the camera angle um, it will look slightly different because i have to tilt them to get to that angle Okay, so I'm going to start by what's sort of in the foreground and this is going to be a rather quick illustration so it's not going to be very, um, how shall I say, uh, true in the botanical sense that it has to be very very uh, realistic so if something doesn't look exactly as it is in reality here uh, it's nothing to worry about because we're just enjoying ourselves and trying to capture the most important parts that the flower has so that if you look at it you could recognize that this is the flower that it is supposed to be so now I'm going to add this center of it and the center has these lovely little kind of like a crown looking um, bits that carry the uh, pollen I suppose so I'm just going to do it like that and then move on to the next flower gosh sorry you probably haven't seen that and let's do the next flower like so i sometimes feel that if i want to have a more um organic look I just start to holding onto my pan less with less sort of um, strength and what that gives me it gives me a looser touch and a more kind of uh, natural sort of um, line work rather than a very forced and um, Um, a line that perhaps doesn't look natural enough so then I have this other flower right behind it so I'm going to look at that now I really enjoy reading um, your comments when you say that you know uh, an illustration that I have done is inspired has inspired you and made you want to take um, to pick up your watercolors and start drawing and painting I think that is exactly what I um, the reason why I'm doing these videos is because I think art is such a great way of uh, distressing and forgetting anything that's sort of maybe going wrong in our lives or stressing us out or even if everything is fine but 
you know, there's something bad on the news or whatever. There's just so much negativity going around that I think this um, community that we have is, is very important to come together uh, either at the, at the end of the day or wherever you have time and connect through art I think is just really beautiful you know and it's something I'm really really enjoying and those of you that leave lovely comments saying that you know um, that it made you feel great and um, you know um, like you're not afraid to use your watercolors or something like that it's just it means the world to me because I feel like I'm doing the the right thing here on YouTube and like I said that that is exactly why I started this channel I think that um, there are amazing artists um, out there that are you know um, doing commissioned work paid work and um, they are super sort of great with with the art they do but there are also some of us that perhaps are not at that level but it doesn't matter because you still can create beautiful pieces um, that will give you pleasure and that's what matters most so I'm absolutely pro art no matter at what level you are and if watching a YouTube video makes you want to either go um, and buy watercolors or pick, pull out what you already have, then I think, you know, I've, I've, done, I've done my job right there and then. So, enough of chatting. Let's just uh, look at the... So I'm looking at the um, these green... Uh, leaves and trying to understand how they work and I'm trying to also give them a slightly different um, angle I'm going to leave it at that it's probably enough so that is the drawing part now let's um, enjoy our painting part Okay, so for those of you that, once again, haven't seen the first part, I'm just going to say it quite quickly. The colours I'm going to use is going to be magenta, queen, quinacridon purple, manganese violet, uh, perylene maroon, quinacridon gold hue, and permanent green olive. Now, you don't have to have these exact colours. You can pick uh, a pink, a purple, a red, a yellow, and a green, in fact. You don't even need two purples, but... Um, that is what I'm going to use and I will be mixing them so I'm not going to be using them as they come in the in the pan so I'm just trying to figure out how to film this because I really want you to see how I'm mixing the colors and how I'm working with the watercolors however um, it's hard to get this humongous palette in okay well hopefully you can see enough from here so I'm going to put my swatch card here and so that I can see what's going on okay and I can find my uh, watercolors easy all right so let's start so i'm going to have the flowers near me just so that i can look and observe uh, look how beautiful this green is when you look under under the uh, flowers it's so pretty but i'm not going to paint this part because we can't see it as much we can see a little bit of it here and there but not from this angle anyway so i am going to start with pink and I'm going to take my um, magenta and I'm going to place it around here uh, by the way um, I've seen a lot of people spray their palettes and I first of all my worry is that um, the palette would just start getting rust on it and and I don't know whether that's something I should be worrying or whether that actually would never happen 
so let me know if if you like to spray your paints because it's supposed to be better um, for the brushes so i'm going to go into the quinacridone purple now and just a little touch because it's a very powerful very strong color and i'm going to start wet on wet i'm trying to avoid these small details right there because they're white ish and so I'm going to leave them like that color. So you can see there's more of the purple at the bottom of the petal. So somehow I'm going to touch it right at the bottom. Like so. And that shoots the watercolor up as you can see. And I'll probably leave it at that because I quite like the veining of it. And then I'm going to move on to the next two. And then later I will come back to it and what I will do is just touch that little line on top and make it a, um, a um, dry on wet. And this looks quite nice. Make sure you don't put too much water because if you put too much water you, it won't stop. Um, at any point the, the watercolor will just shoot right up to the um, petal okay so I'm just going to do the final one now which is the one that's facing the front and my watercolor mix is finishing in time so and then what you can do is you can flick the brush slightly and help to create that um, texture right here which is if we look at the petal from the bottom hopefully right there it's sort of like that let's see was it yeah so it's kind of like feathery oh gosh it doesn't want to focus there we go so that's what we're trying to achieve here so i'm going to repeat the same process you can just pick out on certain details that you like of a flower and then take it as far as you want to take it. You don't need to draw a photographic um, image of it. So as you can see, it's drying a lot paler and that's okay. It's not a problem because these flowers aren't too bright, so it works really well. Okay, so I'm going to go in and do a couple more now. To load my brush with this paint that I have mixed up. And then just touching it here and there. And flicking it up in a couple of places like that if you feel like the um, watercolor has traveled up too much clean out your brush and lift it like so okay let's do the next one So if your mix is too purple, you go back into magenta and bring it back to the color that you need. So I need to be careful now and actually connect this bud. I just realized this round one needs to be connected to like here. It grows from there. Otherwise, it's unclear what this this is. And I'm just making sure I'm not including it as a petal because at the moment it looks really much, very much like the um, petals. So there isn't much water on my brush and I can see the, the um, gloss isn't there, which means the color won't move now this is the Stillman and Burn 
um, sketchbook. Although the paper is, is good enough, it's 270 GSM for watercolour, um, it really doesn't like uh, rewetting or glazing. It starts to uh, break down very quickly, so you need to be aware of that if you're using this technique in this sketchbook. So minimal kind of going back and forth with this watercolour. Now I haven't mixed up any colours actually for this bud, which is sort of like a brownie colour, but I'm going to use um, the Paraline Maroon with um, one of the pinks. No, yeah, so I'm going to put some magenta in there and now I'm going to put quinacridone gold hue in here and although it's not really uh, brown I don't mind I just want this I just want to offset this from the other colors like so and I'm just gonna actually lift quite a bit of it because I don't want it to be the same color as the centers of the flowers if that makes sense okay so next thing let's concentrate on the center which is going to be these lovely maroon colors so I'm going back into that maroon, adding a little bit more and adding a little bit more of the quinacridone gold to make it nice and re rich. So I'm just going to do that just around where it's the darkest, like so. And here, because the petal is hiding most of it, I'm just going to go around the petal to insinuate that that is where the center is, just hiding behind there. And I'm just going to take it out a little bit, like so, not to have a very straight line. And let's see, what can we see here? We can't even see anything here, but I can put it onto these lovely little um, bits and pieces so if the color on your brush is starting to lose its vibrancy go back into it like so and um, add it and then also make sure you don't have it all in straight line because again that will look quite unnatural so go back and add a few more if you need to just to make it look a little more like I said organic in nature things never are in a straight line or in the same number or you know it's not about uh, it's not like in the architecture where things have to be um, precise and uh,